September 13th, St. Eulogius, Patriarch of Alexandria. St. Eulogius was a Syrian by birth and while young embraced the monastic state in that country. The Eutychian heresy had thrown the churches of Syria and Egypt into much confusion. Eutychus, who the heresy is named after, did not have the belief that Jesus was both God and man, but rather he had a confused nature whereupon he was both God and man at different times. The Council of Chancellon denounced this as a heresy in the year 451. Also, in Egypt and Syria, at that time, a great part of the monks were becoming remarkable for their loose morals and errors against the faith. Eulogius learned from the fall of others to stand more watchfully and firmly upon his guard, and was not less distinguished by the innocence and sanctity of his manners than by the purity of his doctrine. Having, by an enlarged pursuit of learning, attained to a great variety of useful knowledge in different branches of literature, he set himself to the study of divinity in the sacred sources of that science, which are the holy scriptures, the tradition of the church as explained in its councils, and the approved writings of its eminent pastors. In the great dangers and necessities of the church, he was drawn out of his solitude and made priest of Antioch by the patriarch St. Anastasius. Upon the death of John, the patriarch of Alexandria, St. Eulogius was raised to that patriarch patriarchal dignity toward the close of the year 583. About two years after his promotion, our saint was obliged to make a journey to Constantinople in order to concert different measures concerning affairs of the church. He met at court St. Gregory the Great and contracted with him a holy friendship, so that from that time they seemed to be of one heart and one soul. Among the letters of St. Gregory, we have several in existence that he wrote to our saint St. Eulogius composed many excellent works against different heresies and died in the year 606. We admire the great actions and the glorious triumph of the saints, yet it is not so much in these that their sanctity consisted as in the constant, habitual, heroic disposition of their souls. There is no one who does not sometimes do good actions, but he can never be called virtuous who does well only by humor or by fits and starts, not by study habits.